chances of Azerbaijan-Armenia conflict settlement higher than ever, German Chancellor says. The chances for a peaceful settlement of the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia are higher now than ever before, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said at a joint press conference with Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. Of course, first of all, we discussed the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan and we agreed that this conflict should be settled peacefully. The chances of that are as high as ever, he said. It is therefore right that you maintain a direct dialogue with Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, the Chancellor told Aliyev. Let me emphasize once again that Germany's offer to lend support in finding a long-term and acceptable solution remains valid. We are ready to do so if all sides want it, Scholz said, urging Baku and Yerevan to find a compromise. The year 2024 can and should be a year of peace in the region. This is both an opportunity and a great responsibility, he added. According to the Chancellor, recent reports of an initial agreement on border demarcation between the two countries are encouraging and it is necessary to maintain this momentum and take further bold steps. We highly value the ongoing peace negotiations between Azerbaijan and Armenia, President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev said, recalling that the foreign ministers of Azerbaijan and Armenia recently met in Germany at the invitation of Chancellor Olaf Scholz, the head of state said the next meeting will be planned in Kazakhstan and thus we are taking additional steps towards signing a peace agreement. On April the 15th, during a visit to Yerevan, Kazakh President Kasim Yomat Tokayev said that he was ready to provide a platform for talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Aliyev responded that he accepted Kazakhstan's proposal to organize a meeting between the foreign ministers of Azerbaijan and Armenia. Belarus has thwarted an attack on the capital Minsk by drones launched from Lithuania, Russian state news agencies reported on Thursday with reference to the head of the Belarusian Security Service, Ivan Tertel. The State Security Committee, in cooperation with colleagues from other law enforcement agencies, has recently carried out a number of acute security measures, which made it possible to prevent strikes by combat drones from the territory of Lithuania on objects in Minsk and its suburbs, Russian RIA news agency quoted Ivan Tertel as saying. Tertel did not provide any evidence to support his claims against NATO member Lithuania. The allegations of attempted drone attack from Lithuania came amid Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko's remarks that the country's opposition planned to seize a district in the west of the country and request support from NATO troops, according to RIA. Addressing the All-Belarusian People's Assembly VNS, meeting on Thursday, Lukashenko said I don't know why they chose Kobrin district, they talk a lot about it. They plan to seize it and appeal to NATO to deploy troops. The Belarusian leader also said that the risk of military incidents along his country's border with neighboring Ukraine was quite high. Russian state news agency TASS quoted Lukashenko as saying there could be an apocalypse if Russia used nuclear weapons in retaliation for Western actions. TASS also quoted Lukashenko as saying on Thursday that several dozen Russian tactical nuclear weapons had been deployed in Belarus. TASS news agency said the deployment was in line with an agreement announced last year by Lukashenko and President Vladimir Putin. It should be noted that Belarus is Russia's close ally and allowed Moscow to use its territory to launch its invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Trump is preparing punishment for Russia due to US dollar. If elected President of the United States at the end of 2024, Donald Trump may impose penalties for countries abandoning the dollar, in particular for Russia. Possible actions include, in particular, export controls and fees for currency manipulation. Bloomberg reports this. It is noted that penalties should be applied to US allies and opponents trying to carry out bilateral trade in other currencies. Economic advisers to former President Donald Trump are considering ways to actively prevent countries from abandoning the use of the dollar. Trump publicly and privately said that he wants the dollar to remain the world's reserve currency. The article reads, Analysts remind, critical statements about the dominance of the dollar in the global financial system began to spread in 2022, when the United States imposed tough economic sanctions against Russia. In particular, then the Russian central bank, members of the government and about 2,500 other persons restricted access to the dollar. In return, Brazil, Russia, India, 
China and South Africa, collectively known as the BRICS countries, discussed de-dollarization at a summit in August 2023. This group seeks global influence, encouraging the accession of key oil-producing countries, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, the article reads. At the same time, its authors note that the BRICS countries may be subject to fines for abandoning the dollar. Trump's advisers say this is the project that could be targeted during his potential second term. Analysts said, I hate when countries go off the dollar. Trump said in a March 11 interview on CNBC, I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like losing a revolutionary war, he said. That will be a hit to our country. As president, Trump weighed forcibly weakening the dollar to support the domestic manufacturing sector. But now, so far he has privately said he doesn't currently see the merits of dollar intervention, according to one person familiar with the matter. With Biden, you're going to lose the dollar as the standard. That'll be like losing the biggest war we've ever lost, he said, blaming Biden's policies for damaging views towards the dollar.